Hi dear friends and subscribers, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show. Well, I'll be doing a grave injustice if uh, I don't uh, discuss about something which I have missed. And as you know, this Cricket Happening Show uh, is, a no, is, a, is not a Cricket Happening Show uh, which only uh, you know, looks after a, a particular aspect. It looks at various aspects and uh, you know, if I, as I said, I'll be doing a grave injustice if I don't cover anything which is going on major in cricket. We all know that today uh, we had the India-Zimbabwe one day international which entered in a, it, uh, uh, the fourth one day international entered with the India win. India going on in fact uh, having a walk in the park victory over Zimbabwe uh, by nine wickets and then currently we have the Ashes test series going on, the third test match between uh, Australia and England and Australia have currently uh, placed at 200 for three after winning the toss and batting first. Uh, we will come to that later. But as I said, this cricket happening show is all about cricket. And one thing that I can't miss, and which I have already missed, so I would definitely like to cover that. Well, very few people would know. As you know, uh, in the West Indies, in the Caribbean, uh, this is the first time uh, on the lines of the Indian Premier League and other countries actually joining the bandwagon, uh, West Indies becomes the uh, other country now uh, to actually... Uh, join the bandwagon as far as the Premier Leagues are concerned by uh, launching their own Caribbean Premier League, uh, which was done probably yesterday or day before yesterday. Uh, there was uh, the, today was the second match in the Caribbean Premier League. The first match was played uh, between I think it was um, uh, if my reckoning was Kiran Pollard's team which actually uh, won the match. So uh, that match is all uh, over, and you know uh, one match is already gone. And um, uh, Kiran Pollard was the hero in that particular match. And Shoaib Malik also played well from Pakistan. Now, as far as the Caribbean Premier League is concerned, today, which is, it was yesterday, it was played at the uh, Providence Stadium in Guyana. Uh, Guyana Amazon Warriors uh, clashed against Trinidad and Tobago Steel, and Guyana Amazon Warriors uh, won by 19 runs. The Guyana Amazon Warriors had uh, contributions coming from uh, Lendy Simmons, uh, 42 of 50 deliveries, two fours and one six. Martin Guptill contributed 32 of 21 deliveries with three fours and one six. Uh, there was 26 coming in from Franklin uh, and uh, bowling 2 for 41 for uh, Dwayne Bravo, uh, Kevin O'Brien at 1 for 14 of Ireland. So Guyana Amazon made 155 and uh, they restricted the Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel innings. Now that was led by the West Indies captain itself, Dwayne Bravo. They were restricted to 136 for 9 uh, with some fine bowling from Per Mall, 3 for 30. The spinners were the one who did the trick there. They took 5 wickets among them out of the 9 wickets to fall. Uh, and uh, Trinidad and Tobago made only 136 for 9, the highest scorer being N. Puran, 54 of 24 balls. He smashed 6 sixes and won 4. Looks to be a fine prospect actually, N. Puran. is a new cap, uh, one has not heard much of him, but he smashed 54 runs of just 24 deliveries with 1, 4 and 6 sixes. And um, well, that is what I just wanted to cover and the man of the match actually went to um, uh, Krish, uh, Krish Kumar uh, Santoki, the left arm uh, pace bowler from the Guyana Amazon Warriors for bowling four overs, no maiden, 20 runs and two wickets. So I just, as I said, uh, this cricket happening show is all about cricket. Uh, yeah, so Caribbean Premier League also is form of sort of a very important thing uh, as far as cricket is concerned because what I'm trying to do in this cricket happening show is I want to reach my cricket uh, to the masses. I want lots of people to join cricket um, I know, enjoy cricket as a game. I know, I, I, I really, really believe in promoting cricket as a game all over the world. Uh, I would be very happy if I have, you know, more and more subscribers coming in from other countries, uh, which are, which are the minnows as far as cricket is concerned. Like we have Croatia, we have Cyprus, we have China, uh, we have Thailand. So there are a lot of uh, crickets. Uh, I, I would love all of them uh, to, you know, encourage, get cricket, get more of cricket enjoy this uh, game uh, as a whole. What a fantastic game uh, this cricket is. And you know, so that's a precise reason, as I said, I want to cover everything but cricket. Everything, uh, sorry, everything uh, in cricket. So that's the reason I just wanted to touch base on that. Thank you dear fans and subscribers for patiently listening to that. And now let's uh, head on uh, to our uh, major international fixtures. As I said, today Zimbabwe and India clashed in the uh, fourth one day here at Bulawayo and India continued uh, their domination in this one-day series uh, by actually having a crushing victory. In fact, they, w they, they won in a canter here with uh, Zimbabwe being restricted to 144. They were 144 all out. Uh, and uh, uh, one thing I would like to say just before, you know, really getting on to this report is that I was a bit surprised that uh, the Jammu and Kashmir of spinner Parvez Rasool 
uh, was not being played in this game uh, because I was under the impression that uh, probably you know for India uh, one would have expected all the reserves to be given an opportunity but it was not to be. In fact only um, two of the reserve persons were given an opportunity. Uh, one was Mohit Sharma who in fact on his uh, debut uh, took the man of the match award. So what a golden debut for Mohit Sharma. Uh, bowled excellently. As I said he has all the uh, weapons in his repertoire to bowl and I'm very very happy to see I have some high hopes on uh, Mohit Sharma as far as and I wouldn't be surprised uh, one day he would be knocking on uh, the Indian doors. In the sense, he would be uh, a, a member of the Indian cricket team. Uh, he's a wonderful bowler. Uh, he's very short, but he has a lot of pace. He was bowling out swingers, in swingers. Uh, he has the bouncer. He has the slower delivery, and everything was seen in full color. And today, uh, what a what a peach of a delivery he had to pick up his double wicket uh, by picking up the wicket uh, wicket of um, Sikandar Raja when he got the ball to swerve away, and Sikandar Raja actually. Uh, got sucked in and he was caught by Dinesh Karthik behind the stumps for seven and Mohit Sharma as I said he had a golden debut bowling 10 overs, 3 maidens, 26 runs and 2 wickets and he got the man of the match award and rightly so. There was one more person who was actually making his debut and uh, that was Cheteshwar Pujara but Cheteshwar Pujara uh, was dismissed pretty early he inside is the ball from Tendai Chathara onto his stumps for 13 and that was the only wicket that India lost in the whole game with India as I said really really having a walk in the park victory uh, 145 for 1 was their score uh, in, in 31st over they accomplished the task and as far as uh, as I said Parvez Rasul the Red Ham I was a bit surprised that he was given an, was not given an opportunity and you know I'm really really waiting for you know uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, the Indian state to actually uh, make history uh, and enter the uh, history of Indian cricket uh, by blooding uh, an youngster uh, Parvez Rasul so that you know Jammu and Kashmir become the uh, as a, was never in the map of Indian cricket. Not a single player has ever represented India uh, from Jammu and Kashmir either in one day internationals or T20s or test matches. So what a proud moment it would be for this uh, rookie off spinner and a very talented off spinner at that Parvez Rasul. So probably the Indian think tank might be uh, definitely uh, unleashing him on the Zimbabweans in the fifth one day international which would be on Saturday because India is uh, leading 4-0 in the series and uh, let me tell you that uh, this display from Zimbabwe uh, was uh, not good at all. The reason being, uh, this was not a track like um, the Harare Sports Club. It was Bulawayo and Queen's Club Sports Club. Bulawayo, uh, there is, uh, I mean, you have a value for runs, and you could have made runs. On even on this particular pitch, the Zimbabwean batsmen struggled. So Zimbabwe is a 144 all out uh, after um, uh, batting first, where India actually won the toss and inserted the Zimbabweans in. Uh, for Zimbabwe. Uh, well, as I said, the debut wicket was taken by Mohit Sharma of, the, of Sikandar Raza. Uh, Vusi Sibanda contributed uh, 24 of uh, 45 deliveries uh, with three fours. Uh, Masakadza was run out brilliantly by Ravindra Jadeja for 10 of 15 balls with one six. Uh, Brendan Taylor once again failed as uh, Jadeja came in and picked him up LBW for a duck. Uh, Sean Williams uh, also uh, was sent back very early to the pavilion uh, out for a blob of the bowling of Unakar who ripped his stumps. Uh, Malcolm Waller uh, came good, uh, took his time, but um, at least uh, for the first time in this series, Malcolm Waller uh, coming good with 35 of 77. But in fact, they had a very good partnership. Uh, that was the time when Zimbabwe were 47 for 5. Half the side were into the pavilion. Uh, but this partnership, uh, which was um, a pretty good partnership because it yielded, uh, high, um, uh, it yielded 80 runs. It was an 80 run. Uh, partnership uh, for the sixth wicket which actually resuscitated the Zimbabwean innings to a certain extent and um, finally Zimbabwe ended with 144 all out. Malcolm Waller's contribution was 35 of 77 balls and again Mohit Sharma the, the debutant came in and, bro and uh, broke this uh, partnership uh, by uh, disturbing I mean I'm getting the wicket of Malcolm Waller. Uh, Chigumbra uh, 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 is one person who has uh, according to me showed a lot of consistency in this series with the bat after quite a long time he contributed 50 of 66 balls, he had an unbeaten 50 uh, in that score of 144 of 66 balls with 4 fours. And then the, the tail end was absolutely no match. As, uh, Amit Mishra, uh, who has been a sort of, uh, he was held up, in fact he was brought on late. And Amit Mishra completely cleaned up the tail by picking up uh, Tendai Chatara for 1, Vittori was out for 8 and Chinoya was out for a duck. 144 all out was the final tally for Zimbabwe which never um, looked like a good score. 
Uh, Mohit Sharma on his golden debut, 10 overs, 3 medals, 2 for 26, picking up the man of the match. Uh, Mohamed Shami, 8 overs, 1 medal, 1 for 34, balled excellently. With that cut, 1 for 27. Jadeja bowled splendidly, 9 overs, 1 medal, 2 for 28, um, uh, coupled with this brilliant fielding. And Amit Mishra, as usual, um, getting wickets is something which has become commonplace for Amit Mishra on the Zimbabwean tour. 8.4 overs, no medal, 25 runs and 3 wickets, coming up and cleaning the tail to bowl out the Zimbabweans for 144. As far as India were concerned, India lost the debutant Chiteshwar Pujara, went inside, uh, inside just onto his stumps of Chathara for 13 and after that there was absolutely no respite uh, for the Zimbabweans as Rohit Sharma and Suresh Raina combined uh, into a winning partnership uh, of um, 122 runs to take India to victory with Rohit Sharma uh, unbeaten 64 of 90 deliveries with 5 fours and 1 six and Suresh Raina towards the end uh, really cracking some good form in fact uh, Virat Kohli uh, not really uh, coming up the order and you know promoting Suresh Raina to just get uh, get him some match practice and Suresh Raina was not out 65 or 71 balls six first as said it was a very very easy victory in the end uh, India continued the domination in the series 145 for one was the final tally for India in the 31st over the victory was India's as far as bowling was concerned Chatara was the only wicket taker one for 31 Vittori none for 21 uh, Chinoya four overs for 14 looked good would say a 9 was none for 42, 2 overs for 12 for Chigumbra. Uh, man of the match is that Mohit Sharma took the Man of the Match award. The Saturday would be the uh, final game of this one day series. India have completely dominated this one day series. Even on a placid pitch like uh, Bulawayo, uh, Zimbabweans couldn't uh, have any answer to India's bowlers. And um, one only hopes that Parvez Rasul, the Radamo spinner from Jammu and Kashmir, makes history in the fifth one day international, which is going to be played on Saturday. Well, now I'm going to shift the attention now. We go on to the Ashes Test Series. Uh, the Ashes Test Series, well, uh, right now I see uh, that um, Australia are currently placed at 207 for 3. Uh, they were the ones who won the toss and uh, elected to bat first. They had a good opening partnership between uh, Shane Watson and Chris Rogers. Shane Watson was uh, biding his time at the crease, uh, trying to and this is a very, very placid pitch. There's nothing in for the ballers. You have to just, you know, stick to a good line and length. Uh, and today, uh, so Australia went off to a good start of uh, 76 after winning the toss. Uh, Australia made a lot of changes uh, in this team. They first, um, they had David Warner, the middle order, uh, coming into the middle order. Uh, he replaced uh, Phil Hughes. Uh, Nathan Lyon and uh, Mitchell Stark also came into the team at the expense of James Patterson, who was injured, and Ashton Agar, who was removed from the team. And uh, Shane Watson uh, was the first wicket to go. Uh, when Breston took his wicket, when Watson was uh, caught by Cook in the slips of the bowling of Breston for 19 with two fours. Uh, after that, uh, Chris Rogers was joined by Usman Khwaja, and Usman Khwaja had a horrendous decision being made. And once again, the DRS came into question. Actually, Usman Khwaja was given out by umpire Tony Hill. Usman Khwaja uh, uh, actually uh, reviewed the decision. It went to the third umpire, that is uh, um, Kumar Dharmasena, the panel of umpires. And Kumar Dharmasena. Uh, also endorsed what uh, Tony Hill did on the field uh, by adjudging Husman Khwaja out but there was a real daylight of a gap between the bat and the ball as we when we saw in the replay and Usman Khwaja was given uh, caught behind by prior of the bowling of Swan for one what a horrendous decision and Usman Khwaja had to go and the DRS is once again being questioned 82 for 2 that was the score for um, Australia at that stage and Usman Khwaja couldn't believe it uh, after that, um, uh, it was uh, Chris Rogers. Now, Chris Rogers was looking superb. Today, he played some marvelous strokes. Uh, as you know, he, has, uh, he definitely has uh, good knowledge of English conditions. He's played for Middlesex, scored tons of runs, and that's a precise reason Australia got in, into this uh, test series. And finally, Chris Rogers proved himself, but what a shame and uh, what a poor um, thing for Chris Rogers after looking so good, stroking the ball ever so fluently of the covers in the offside. He collected a lot of runs. And he was looking good. He was never looking at any trouble, uh, looking on any trouble. But um, Graham Swan got a ball which really turned deep. In fact, it was a deep turn for Swan. Actually pitched outside the off stump and came in and had him plump in front. With Chris Rogers uh, missing his century, he was really set for his century. Uh, he was uh, combining into a good partnership with the captain, Michael Clark. But unfortunately, he had to go. Chris Rogers bowled. It was clean. It was LBW. Well, Graham Swan for 84 with 14 boundaries. As I said looked very, very good. It was fluent in his stroke making. Uh, probably the pitch also had something to do with that because it was a very, very placid pitch that uh, Australia and England are playing today at Old Trafford in Manchester. There's definitely signs of some term. We saw uh, how Graham Swan got the, got the wicket of uh, Chris Rogers. So there's definitely lots of turn on this wicket. 
but uh, looks the batting looks easy. But uh, what is very important is that Australia have to put up a good score on the board. Otherwise, uh, the initiative that Australia took in winning the toss and electing to bat would be lost. So right now, Michael Clark is looking good. He took his time at the crease, and then he decided uh, that to negate the spin of Graham Swan, he should use his feet. And we saw uh, Michael Clark uh, using his uh, 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 feet to twinkling effect uh, by uh, slamming, um, you know, hitting um, uh, Swan for lots of fours. He lofted him for boundaries. And he has not allowed uh, Graham Swan to really, really uh, have the wood on Michael Clark. But James Anderson was the bowler who really has troubled um, Anderson uh, and uh, Michael Clark uh, to a great extent. But Michael Clark has uh, lived, uh, lived up to it, and he has um, right now uh, he is uh, unscathed uh, on 77 with 10 boundaries. Stephen Smith is also looking good uh, with his stroke play. He's not out on 25, 2 four, giving good, par uh, good partnership now. Uh, in fact. Um, Right now, the partnership uh, is uh, probably worth uh, 78 runs uh, for the fourth wicket. And as I said, England and Australia have to put up a big score on this board because the pitch is looking placid and there's not in much, much for the bowlers. As far as the bowling is concerned, Anderson, 15 overs, 2 minutes, none for 54. Troubled Michael Clark a lot. Uh, Brown, 17 overs, 3 minutes, none for 64. And Bresson was uh, 12 overs, 3 minutes, 1 for 38. Uh, Swan 15.3 overs, 2 minutes, 2 for 46 for him. Joe Root 2 overs for 8 runs. So that's the current situation. Australia 208 for 3. We are in the final session uh, on the first day of the third Investec Test match of the Ashes series, which is played at Manchester in Old Trafford. With this uh, live update, your host Ram is leaving you from the Cricket Happening Show for today, but promising you that I'll be back with more of this Cricket Happening Show tomorrow uh, to talk to you about the uh, first day's play between Australia and England once it ends. And also, uh, we will have some more cricket. Probably the Caribbean Premier League is something that I would be covering at that particular stage. Thanks for your company and thanks for your immense patience in listening to this cricket happening show. Your host Ram will see you tomorrow. Thank you.